You're listening to Grad House Courthouse. We put movies on trial to determine whether or not a film has committed too many movie misdemeanors to be considered viewable. Please rise for the Honorable Judge this episode. Man, I forget this movie already. Oh. That's a strong start. Before we begin in earnest... Can we just agree that this movie is someone's fault? Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it's not mine because I actively opposed watching this movie, but no one listened to me. So I, I think I can narrow it down to two people. It was either Dave or Adam. Now, Dave is very pro-China, so we know that he wanted to see this movie. But Adam has consistently picked terrible movies for us to watch. So how do we, how do we know what's real? I didn't even know this existed. Until Adam pointed it out. No. So. No, I am not taking blame on this one. This one, I feel, is <laughs> Dave's choice because he saw something shiny, which was Jackie Chan in a trailer, and he voted for this. I didn't even see the trailer. Yeah, you did. We all watched the trailer together. It's even worse. <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave, did you pick this movie and not actually pay attention? Dave had his eyes closed the entire time. <laughs> did we watch the trailer together? Yeah. Hi, welcome to Grindhouse Courthouse. This week, we watched 2019's Iron Mask. Nope, not the Iron Mask. Iron Mask. You know, that movie with Jackie Chan and Arnold Schwarzenegger that nobody saw. This is a Russo-Chinese-British-together-fund-happiness cultural film made for the sake of, as far as we can tell, promoting Chinese culture and Russian superiority to the filthy dogs of the West. <laughs> this movie was actually produced by, among 30 others, Jackie Chan and Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's a sequel, as far as we could tell, to another film that also stars the apparently lead actor Jason Fleming <laughs> and we'll get to why why it's apparently a lead actor because there's three stories going on and it follows English traveler Jonathan Green played by Jason Fleming who receives from Peter the Great in order to map the Russian Far East this is where this sequel takes off um, another name for the movie is called V and I'm sure that's perfect Mandarin pronunciation V2 journey to China the original story followed Jason Fleming in his journey to Transylvania, also in a cartographical journey to map Transylvania, I guess. I don't know. I didn't watch it. It doesn't matter. Anyway, the difference with this one is instead of Dracula, it's kind of like Great Wall starring Matt Damon is the main plot. There's also Jackie Chan, who's a dragon master who hasn't cut the dragon's eyelashes in a while. Um, there's also Peter the Great of Russia involved. Lots of prisons. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a beef eater, British guard type, Tower of London guard thing. The plot makes no sense. I can't explain it in a single go. So we're going to kind of develop it as the story unfolded as far as we could follow. It's the strangest movie we've ever reviewed. It doesn't make any sense how it was produced. Oh, yeah. It doesn't make any sense how you can watch it online either. It's seemingly just streamed <laughs> for free on YouTube along with hundreds of <laughs> other movies. Adam, what was the name of the the streaming channel on youtube that we watched it on i think it's vss film yeah so go check that channel out or vvs it's it's very canadian uh they're based out of quebec and their mandate is apparently to provide movies to the masses for free so good for them <laughs> i i really think that they should focus on producing quality movies for us to watch because the iron mask as previously stated is a fucking disaster where do we want to begin with this movie how do we want to start talking about it because that in itself is a challenge well to f first i want to to pull back the curtain a little bit for maybe for all our listeners out there all 12 of them <laughs> usually we'll watch this movie and then we divvy up our like courthouse roles for like judge and prosecution and stuff for this one we decided there's no way absolutely anyone could credibly defend this piece of garbage movie and we changed it to one of our deposition episodes like this but before we did that i drew the short straw I got thrown under the bus that I was supposed to defend this thing. <laughs> and I think I developed like Stockholm syndrome this week. <laughs> Cause I, I'm like identifying with my captor and I started to convince myself of all the reasons why this movie was good. I, I just had a rough week, you guys. And part of that is that I even went back to watch the prequel movie that this is a sequel to. Mm -hmm. I watched Forbidden Oops. Empire, and just to immerse myself in the world of the, the Forbidden Empire universe, or the <laughs> FU. You have the deep lore. You have the deep, deep lore. <laughs> it's pretty shallow. It's like a, it's like a kiddie pool of deep lore. <laughs> and I will report in, like, the Cliff Notes version is that the first movie is 
probably worse than this one. Oh. So that gives you an idea of what, what we're dealing with here. But it has Chinese dollars now, so it's great. I, fascinatingly, though, the story is from Russian folklore or some ho Russian horror story. There are like dozens of retellings of this story already from the first one in Transylvania. And it is the biggest grossing Russian movie in Russian history. So it's like the Avengers of Russia. <laughs> so they made like two to three thousand rubles on it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. How many how many how many bitcoins is a ruble worth? <laughs> Can somebody do one of those conversions for me? I don't think you'll like the ratio. Yeah, it's not favorable. <laughs> it's one to one. But is one to one <laughs> <laughs> but it's just it's it's so bad and like so ostensibly the lead the, the hero of this movie is this jonathan green dude who is this so the the movies take place in like the 18th century and he's kind of like an amalgamation of leonardo da vinci like a british da vinci he explicitly brings it up a few times in the first one <laughs> it's just name dropping oh yeah me, me and my bro leo <laughs> <laughs> and he's like a mix of that and everyone's like maybe pick your favorite famous cartographer i don't know do we want to go around the room and pick our famous our favorite <laughs> cartographers anybody well i could list so many it's hard to choose but so, so i'm i'm more of a mercator man but uh i've always appreciated the flair of diego guterres uh anyone <laughs> no? what a pedestrian opinion to have that's <laughs> That is such an unremarkable opinion. How does how does John Cabot and Jack Carche fit into this? <laughs> Those guys are pretty hard on the list too. But he's like he's supposed to be essentially the the hero of this movie, even though for half of Iron Mask he just completely disappears, and they just we deal with this like I mean, we we can get to that, or we can probably gloss it all over it. I don't know. It's it's just I. It's tough to attack this movie because. I want to jump right down uh, your throat about saying that my main character isn't important <laughs> to the story because he's so important. So, you know, he, he goes to China and then he's there and then the movie's over. <laughs> it's pretty Should compelling we follow stuff. the movie how they had attempted the plot? Uh, let me answer your question with another question. Can we do that? Yes. Yeah, sure. Totally. We could try. Because this movie is a fucking pile of spaghetti. <laughs> And then you start twirling the spaghetti and then bees come out. <laughs> and then the bees sting you and you don't want to watch it anymore. Okay, so as as the as the de facto judge, I'm okay, I'll take the main narrative voice. You each jump in where I miss some absolutely critical details of this plot. Okay. Scene opens. Ancient China, somewhere. Not sure where. Probably Wuhan. Anyway, scene opens. <laughs> probably. It takes place in the same place that Fist of Legend yes. took place. Gotcha. China. China, Japan, somewhere between World War I and modern day. Okay, opening scene. Gotcha. There's a Chinese myth dragon, I, and it produces <laughs> some kind of spice, some magic. I think it's Chinese allspice. And this spice is so good. It's so good. But then there's the white wizards and the princess. So the white wizards and the princess, their job is to cut the dragon's eyelashes. And I forget exactly why, but that's what their job is. And it's somehow tied to the spice. Because the eyelashes grow. And if they don't cut the eyelashes, the dragon yes. falls asleep. It's all perfectly reasonable. I think the concept is they keep the eyelashes trimmed so the dragon could be uh, like awake and alive. And But you also... And the dragon's kind to them in turn for helping him stay like awake. Yes. I think that's like the whole concept of that. That's, that's all it is. But the eyelashes go into the ground to create this plant with healing properties, which we find out is tea. Right. It's healing tea. Sorry, not a spice. It's a healing tea. Now, the key is, is that because they're good white wizards, they only take as much as the dragon's willing to provide. Evil black wizards attack, and these motherfuckers are straight out of Big Trouble in Little Chinatown. Like, <laughs> they look awesome. So... Th there are points, there are many parts of this movie that are visually cool. The problem is the acting, the plot, the, uh, well, the lack of plot, the, the three <laughs> plots jammed together, and just like deep, deep, deep cultural differences on how a story works, which is a real problem when you have a Russo-Chinese-English production and nobody knows what's going on anymore. So the, the Black Wizards attack, and they're more interested in just maximizing the amount of tea that can be um, basically harvested. So the dragon's eyelashes grow extremely long. It falls asleep. 
The white wizard is imprisoned in one prison, and the princess is imprisoned as far away as is possible, which, based on this movie, is the Tower of London and some Russian gulag somewhere. In, in Moscow. Moscow. They are actually in Moscow, because that leads right, right, to the right. next scene that I want to talk about. But uh, please. <laughs> well, I was... Okay, so is there anything to add to this prelude to set up one, yeah. one of the three plots? <laughs> yeah, you, you forgot to mention that there is a witch that is leading right. the Black Wizards. And they took over the dragon's cave, and there's a seal in order to get into that cave to get to the dragon. And that seal has been place somewhere oh yeah the, the seal the seal is important because apparently in the united states or i guess some of the western world this movie is called the iron mask and in other parts of the world it's called the dragon seal and yeah. you would think you would think that that would be important and on wikipedia it's called v2 journey to yeah. china <laughs> yeah there's none multiple this names for this movie <laughs> uh, and none of them seem to really encapsulate what the movie no. is about because certainly the seal and everything we just talked about is important to the plot but it's called the iron mask so immediately after this scene where we learn about the white wizard and people getting in different jails and a power grab and whatever else what do they what do they open with immediately after that now that the exposition is finished we can start the movie is right? the exposition finished because because they the next part of exposition is they recap the entire first movie where he's in transylvania and all these like weird <laughs> ukrainian bat monster things uh, just to be clear does he not meet dracula yeah he meets dracula right it's well he meets a bloodborne creature where like he lifts up some skin folds and you can see a million little eyes and they stare directly into you the viewer and you go oh my god what kind of horrible mystical fantasy yeah. world is this but then no yeah and that's and that's, that's literally that like that 30 seconds up. is literally the coolest part of the whole movie the whole first movie that i watched it was awful. And it essentially, the whole, the first movie is essentially a Scooby-Doo episode. Like, he gets <laughs> trapped in this, like, Ukrainian village, and there's a bunch of monsters terrifying, pe terrifying people with all the eyes and, eyes and shit. And then he finds out that the, the town priest is behind it all. And he, like, finds him out, points him out, and he's like, I would have gotten away with this if it wasn't for, for you damn cartographers. <laughs> 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 I, I love for all the cartographers watching this movie they're probably all like yes finally we're the heroes <laughs> we're being recognized <laughs> it's about time representation we deserve um also earlier the question was who's your favorite cartographer my favorite cartographer is google maps <laughs> yes <laughs> oh, yeah. oh map quest circa 2007 Ooh. for me so, what a mess of a movie. So, we learn more about the first film. Are we in the Tower of London yet? Do we have to go to Russia yeah, first? Yeah, like, so, do we have to go see the prison? We, we have, no, 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 no. Russia's later. We do Russia's exposition. Later. Yeah, we do exposition dump of the dragon, which black wizards, white wizards. Then we get introduced to Jackie Chan in the tower with the man in the iron mask and a very old, creepy, horny man. <laughs> that's not Arnold Schwarzenegger, but that's yeah. another character. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so we, 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 we fade out, and there's some hilarious wipes in this, in this movie, but we fade out of ancient China kind of, I, I think it was mostly actually um, like cartoon, like hand-drawn, the prelude. So now we actually cut into live action. We are in a, what looks to be basically the Tower of London. I, I think it's actually confirmed to be the Tower of London. Yeah. And there are three prisoners chained together in a way that enables only one of them to reach into the middle of the prison cell. There, three of them are against three of the four walls of the cell. And they're chained together so that only one individual could reach the center of the cell. There's a crazy old man who they kind of subtly allude to being the Count of Monte Cristo, I think we kind of agreed. Um, there's Jackie Chan. And then there's a man in an iron mask, hence the North American title of the film. So without, you know, beating around the bush, the guy in the iron mask is Peter the Great, like Tsar Peter the Great of Russia. So this is already going to be really convoluted. So I'm not going to like keep any mysteries for the, for the audience because it, it won't make any sense. He's played by an actor called, oh God, Yuri... Kolikolnikov, um, who you've known from nothing, and they ADR pretty much all of his lines. <laughs> Actually, he was, you would, you might recognize him in one thing. Uh, he what? was in Game of Thrones. What? Oh, really? He is one of the wildlings. He's, one, he's the bald guy with all the scars on his head that eats people. He's the cannibal one, and he wields a big axe. Oh, right. It's Fuck. Like, oh, we should, no. can, right. can someone run down the actual name of that character? Just check the internet. I'll just make a quick guess here. 
Um, they probably named him Man Eater Bad Guy, but <laughs> I don't know. It's it's hard to say. It was, certainly, I feel ways about Game of Thrones after season eight. <laughs> yeah, but in uh, any case, so we'll we'll, we'll track down uh, that name in a minute. But in any case, Yuri Koli Kol. Oh my God, Kolo Kolnikov. That's the last time I'll be saying that name. Nailed it. Um, he's you. playing Peter the Great. <laughs> he is the man in the Iron Mask, hence the name of the title. However, we have to remember there are three ongoing plots throughout this whole movie, and these are the three plots. And it's the only way we're going to be able to keep this whole goddamn podcast straight. We have, number one, Chinese myth dragon with long eyelashes. Yes. That yeah. involves witch empress with the black wizards, white wizard, yep. and princess. That's one plot. Second plot. Jonathan Green, cartographer. Hero of the film. <laughs> <Who's>, <laughs> we, we need to remember, hero of this film, it is his sequel. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> Third plot, Peter the Great, who, by the way, was never jailed and never covered with an iron mask. There's like no story about that. There's definitely so like be cool. I, I can't even fathom how this like came about because like there's definitely like a story of the Iron Mask and like there's a story about like French aristocracy or English aristocracy or whoever it was. There's no story about Peter the Great, yeah. maybe the most famous czar of all time, being chained up in the Tower of London with an iron mask on his face, but whatever. <laughs> they need they needed a big one. Don't you remember that brief period in his life where they like put in an imposter and like nobody noticed and it was a really funny prank? So they sent him to jail and put a mask on him and then he broke out after, I don't know, like a year or a week or <laughs> three hours. It's not clear. But uh, I, I would like to take this time to talk about the entire prison sequence because okay. a lot of people, us included, picked up this movie because we thought that Arnold and uh, Jackie Chan were going to be in the film the entire time and they're not they're really, whoa, whoa, really whoa 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 we should back up well we haven't even introduced who jackie chan yes we haven't introduced we did we, we said that he was the wizard we did oh my god yes <laughs> we took bets on how long they would be in this film i don't think anyone expected them to be in this film more than like 10 minutes <laughs> okay okay we'll do that right after so i gotta take a little bit of control over this so before we end the third prisoner is jackie chan he is not masked he is very clearly who he is and he is quite explicitly right away presented as the white wizard. So remember, dragon plot, Chinese myth dragon, eyelashes, white wizard, princess. Okay, so Jackie Chan's yep. the white wizard. Okay, now, next. We watched this trailer. There were two actors in this trailer that we gave a shit about. And the only reason we watched this movie. One was Jackie Chan, the white wizard. The second was a psychotic looking Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, they're both producers on this film along with like 30 other random russians and chinese conglomerates and like the communist party of china and vladimir putin so it's <laughs> i don't think they invested a ton of money in it but they, their their credit is as people who wanted to see this movie happen and they acted in it um and then we took bets on how long they would each appear so does anyone have the actual guesses oh my god uh, Dave, you set this up and you don't have the shit ready. Right here. <laughs> but no one has the predictions how long they'll be in. Only Tom. Yeah, we didn't actually only do Tom time. is only Matt provided time for this. No, and Tom. How much Tom did said I say? Thirty-seven seconds. Matt said two minutes. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> I said the whole thing. Does anyone have the? It's all about Jackie Chan, Ooh. but not Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay, I said very little time. By Price is Right rules, you lost. Oh, Dave, yeah. <laughs> you were the big loser here. I, oh, yeah, I agree right. with that. Um, Schwarzenegger and Jackie Chan have actually quite a bit interaction, probably about five, to, between five and ten minutes of the film. They're interacting with each other really heavily. I would argue they've got the most meaningful interactions out of any characters throughout the movie, and all they do is punch <laughs> each other. So, But their scenes are fairly broken up, right? Like, we, we have Jackie Chan in the cell, with Iron Mask and a carrier pigeon comes in, and this is what kicks off the story. This is what okay, gets we, everything. If we're gonna going. do it, we have to do it. We can't just allude to it. We have to explain it. So, you want to do the homing pigeon, Adam? You want to go there? <laughs> oh God, oh God! There's so much pressure on this well, now because <laughs> I don't even know where it goes. <laughs> there, there are there are three storylines running sort of parallel to each other in this universe. And very quickly in the movie, someone probably said, oh my God, there's no reason for these people to work together or interact with each other. We need something to just suck this all together, really bring it home. 
Now, I think that most people would say there's got to be some sort of organic method to bring these people together. Like there's an escape attempt and they run into each other or she's visiting someone else and they run into each other. But no, they went for the literal dumbest option possible, which is just random happenstance. <laughs> The cartographer sends out a homing pigeon to write a letter to his wife saying, I am in prison. You need to fucking help me right now. That's not what she wrote. That, don't you fucking write it. So that note then gets taken to the Tower of London where the man in the iron mask grabs it, doesn't do anything other than like, oh, someone wrote a cool note on this. I'd better write a note on my own on the back. Ties it up with the pigeon, releases it. That pigeon then goes to her house. She reads the note from her husband going, oh my God, my husband's in prison. Flips it over and says, well, there's a guy in an iron mask who says he's Peter the Great and he's in prison. I'd better take this to my father. So she runs downstairs to talk to Charles Dance, who, and Matt, I believe he had a larger role in the first movie, correct? He, well, sort of. He's in like <laughs> one scene in this one, and he's in maybe three in the first one. Okay, so he's exactly the same character in this movie as he was in the last. <laughs> <About> the <same. laughs> but... But but the, it's, interestingly, he still receives third billing in this movie on the poster. The poster has Jackie Chan, well, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Charles Dance, and then that's it. No, but I'm pretty no sure Jason that's a Fleming. Screen Actors. No, but I think that's a Screen Actors Guild thing, like like level oh. of seniority and pay and stuff. That that determines mm -hmm. their yeah billing. I also think it's an attempt to trick the audience into watching the movie <laughs> oh, yeah. because they list all these actors that <laughs> oh, yeah. were in movies we that you enjoy. So but, you know, what a happy coincidence. So Charles Dance gets this letter and uh, reads both sides going, okay, my wife's husband, who I fucking despise, by the way, uh, is in jail. Can we just stop And him? also, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, write Peter about the, the jail. is in the Tower of London. No, we can't. Nothing that you're <laughs> about to say is important. So then she decides out of everything to just like up and get herself involved in all of this to free the man in the iron mask and do all that. None of that makes any sense. There's no reason for these characters to behave this way. Now you may make your point. Thank you. You lied about that. But it's such a small thing. It doesn't matter. But he, her, his letter has nothing to do about him in jail. Oh, but the pointing out my lie. Is <laughs> yeah, because she doesn't get all like she's not worried about her husband. She doesn't know where her husband is. But he doesn't say that he's in right. jail. Oh, thank you for making my point for me. So we should we should clarify a couple things here. So the 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 fiance, I think she's a fiance, not a wife. Is that correct, or is she is she married? So so she is. She's not. They're not. I, so for some context from the first movie. So really, you got to watch both of these movies to get the full story. Of course, with all of these pieces of shit movies. <laughs> yeah, go on. From the first one, they don't. I don't think they're even fiancés. I think they they basically slept with each other once, and then Charles Dance catches them in bed in the mor the next morning, and then chases them off, and he runs away. Right. We saw that scene. And then, but he does. He still writes letters to to this woman. Miss Dudley is her name. Yeah, and she's played by Anna Hurina. Hur also, all of her lines are eighty yard because she's Russian. Oh yeah, she she. I I don't think she can speak a, a, a lick of English at all. But interestingly, and they kind of gloss over that in this movie. So when she finds out that her husband's missing or in trouble or whatever, she leaves and goes to help find him. And that's how they bring all these people together. They kind of conveniently leave out that they have a child together what what in the first movie in the first movie after that one time they sleep <laughs> together oh no oh no is right yeah you see the you see the kid and that's like the only reason his <laughs> her dad is like anyway involved with him oh right oh boy it's so the yeah so they have a child and she just like up and like leaves it so and he is basically just a just kind of a scumbag who like impregnated a woman and then split town and left to go uh make maps <laughs> someone has to pay the bills matt someone has to pay the bills yeah so to fill in a little bit here now this is not linear as the movie presents it but for the sake of audience understanding of what's going on the reason that jonathan green was in russia where he was imprisoned in moscow was because the original peter the great had invited him to come and make maps because he's such a good map maker and he'd come on his invitation of course at this point peter the great has got an iron mask slapped on his face and thrown into the tower of london and an imposter has taken his place he shows up in russia um he talks to basically one of the conspirators who has installed this this imposter Peter the Great, finds out that the original Peter the Great had hired this map maker and just throws him straight in jail. 
Now, why the homing pigeon flew to Peter the Great makes absolutely <laughs> no sense. It, okay, that actually makes more sense to me why she is more worried now. Because the letter is signed by Peter the Great. And if he's in jail, then she, he can't be in Russia but, to meet her husband. So that connection makes sense. Is that it? But the pigeon, the, the, oh. the pigeon going to that cell does not make sense. I agree with that. Imagine you're the one yeah. reading that note. Oh, no. my long lost husband. So you get a and letter. You flip it over, and then there's a bunch of shit about like, oh, Trudeau needs my help, and only I can do it. That's I the better equivalent. Get going. No, 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 no. You get the letter, Tom. Tom, you get a letter from your husband saying he's in like Russia, and she knows he's going to Russia to see Peter the Great. Uh huh. So in the back of that letter, yep. there's a saying, "I'm in jail." Uh -huh. I'm Peter the Great. I'm in jail. Wouldn't that send a red flag to you? Say, hey, my husband's supposed to meet him, but the guy he's meeting is in jail in London. If you sent me a note after you said you were going to go make maps for Trudeau, <laughs> and on the back of it, it's like, I'm the real Trudeau. <laughs> you have to come save me. I'd be like, Dave, that's a, that's a good one. You got me. And I would crumple it up, and I would throw it away. And I would die in jail. That is a normal human response. I don't know. And that's what separates Tom from Miss Dudley, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of see the connection they're going with there now. I didn't catch that in the movie when watching it, but... This is this has taken us 30 minutes to explain, but yet we are five <laughs> minutes into this film. <laughs> I yeah, made I know. That clear. We haven't even One we haven't most... even kicked this off. <laughs> okay, I, I gotta take control. I gotta take control. We're gonna start streamlining <laughs> things. All right. So here's what's funny. So this crazy fucking Russian czar gets this English letter in coded language, looks into reflection, goes, "Hey, what does this mean? I speak no English." And they're like, gets the Chinese guy to translate it. <laughs> I forgot about that. So the Chinese guy translates it. The Russian czar writes a letter to this English aristocratic family of Charles Dance and Anna Harina, played by Miss Dudley, playing Miss Dudley. And then they all, and then Miss Dudley decides she needs to go find her husband. She sets out on a journey to Moscow and then ultimately China. In the meanwhile, the, the crew, the trio in the Tower of London, they decide that it's time to bust out of this joint. So they sacrifice the Count of Monte Cristo, the old guy. Wait. He gets killed. It's important to note how the Count of Monte Cristo <laughs> I forget. I fucking forget. How does he die? So Miss Dudley went to the Tower of London saying, did you write this note? You're in a mask and that's weird. And then the Count of Monte Cristo reference character gets a boner and oh, yeah. dies. He dies horny, struggling against his restraints. He's only got so much blood left. It happens to the best of us. Yeah. 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 Dave died once from that. So yeah. What a way to go. Um, so anyway, he dies. The chain, they can drag the chain around. They beat up the guards. They like half escape, basically, to put it simply. Now... Enter Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger is playing James Hook, the chief guard of the Tower of London. Basically, he's a guard who's tough as nails, but a heart of gold. He's he's firm, but he's fair. So he'll fight the prisoners. <laughs> he'll fight the prisoners in this death pit. And if they can crawl up out of this ladder and escape, he'll let them go. Stern, stern, <laughs> but fair. So... So there's an extended fight scene of Jackie Chan and Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is great. I mean, who hasn't yeah. wanted to see Jackie Chan fight Arnold Schwarzenegger? That's amazing. And also, Except of I course. I wanted, I wanted it to not be like 70-year-old Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is like. <laughs> it's a little, yeah. To his credit, Jackie Chan still looks pretty good. He He's yeah. still got some moves. Yeah, Jackie Chan, he's so, still got the moves, yeah. Uh, Arnold doesn't. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger does <laughs> so, not. On a scale of one to Steven Seagal, where would you put Arnold Schwarzenegger in this movie? Because he's, it's pretty bad. Uh, are we sure we want to use Steven Seagal as a good? Steven Seagal being <laughs> bad and one being good, right? Yeah, what's good and what's bad in that scale? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, both ends of the scale are bad. You don't want to be at either end. So both? This is both? I guess seven? <laughs> oh, then I'd say he's probably, he's probably like a... He's like Dolph Lundgren in The Punisher. Like, oh. he's physically there, but, like, not much is yeah. happening. You know what I mean? Um, See, all I'm hearing from Matt right now is that he wants a deep fake of the young Arnold Schwarzenegger and the young Jackie Chan fighting. Oh, wouldn't that be cool, though? Like, you get... If you want deep fakes of Arnold Schwarzenegger, look no further than, like, the last four Terminators because it's got them. <laughs> exactly. um, okay, so long story short, Jackie Chan and Schwarzenegger fight to a draw. More or less, Yuri Kolokolnikov, a.k.a. Czar Peter, um, he gets out of there. Oh. You wouldn't say that. Either. 
Yeah, I know. I did it pretty good, though, he, didn't he I? He gets out of there with the, the dragon seal because that's what Jackie Chan is doing when he's fighting Arnold. He's bouncing around trying to find this dragon seal, which then he passes off to the man in the iron mask because he can flee with Miss Dudley. Just right. got to make that clear. The dragon seal yeah. is very because... important for this story to move <laughs> forward. Right. If he doesn't have the MacGuffin, then they can't meet together in the third act. Right. right. And does and does he tell does he tell Tsar Peter to get to China, or is that just implied? He, he, or is that or he is he says, dragged there with Miss Dudley? You no, know, he says find the princess, which is Jackie Chan's daughter. Right. And we'll get to her in a, in a second here. That's it. I think that's the only line. Yeah, that's the only line that's talking okay. out to her. Okay. Basically, long story short, Jackie Chan doesn't get out. Tsar Peter does. Tsar Peter, Miss Dudley. The two Russian leads in this movie, in this British Chinese Russian movie, um, they escape, <laughs> ADRing their way all the way back to Moscow. Oh man, we haven't we haven't emphasized enough. We haven't emphasized the ADR aspect of this enough. Yeah. It's like every even the people who are English first language speakers they ADR'd their lines after the fact. It's yeah, they got. I don't understand it. It's awful. They got paid twice. <laughs> I guess. They got paid twice. They got paid to film, come in, do their lines, and then the, the company came back and was like, we need you to go over your lines one more time. I'm just like, I, but I did that. I recorded this. You, you caught it on film. She's like, just record it one more time. And then when they, they tried to sync it up, it's still a bit off, and it just throws, throws the viewer for a loop when you're, when you're right. listening and watching this movie. Okay, we yeah, got to get the fuck bad. out of London. We're never gonna, we're never gonna end this podcast. <laughs> in the last scene. Sorry. So we've been, we've been talking about this for seven hours, and we're still in London setting up. The plot. Remember, there's a fucking dragon in this movie. Anyway, we're going to Moscow. <laughs> we're going to Moscow. Goddamn dragon with long eyelashes in this movie. We're in Moscow. <laughs> Tsar Peter. <laughs> Has escaped from the Tower of London. He's got a fucking iron mask on. He is with Ms. Dudley, another goddamn Russian who's ADRing the whole time they're on this journey. And it's not, it's not really shown much how they get to Moscow. I don't really remember. But the point is, let's just get to Moscow. Oh, no. I could talk oh about God. how they okay. went to Moscow for a long time. Did they get to Moscow? I don't, I don't think they went to Moscow. So, yeah. yeah, they just got on a boat and went to China. Did they go straight to China? Yeah, they went straight to China. But it was very oh, okay. unclear why they got on that boat. Straight to, to China. Yeah. <laughs> Straight to China. They yeah. went straight to China. Why did they pilot the ship through all those rocks if there's so many different ways to get to China? Because they have that entire CG scene where it's like, only I, the man in the iron mask, could pilot oh, right. this ship. And then he like directly right. goes through. There were pirates. Yeah. Fuck, we forgot about it's, the pirates. Just, <laughs> there were pirates. Oh, yeah. Russian there's pirates. There's pirates. One of them is short. Every time he's on screen, the only thing the movie can focus on is look how short this guy is. Isn't that fucking So anyway, funny. they hired the dwarf from Pirates of the Caribbean. You all know who he is. He's the bald guy. If you watched that TLC movie about the dwarfs, you know which one. He is the captain of a pirate ship. Ms. Dudley and uh, Peter the Great get on the boat. Peter the Great gets his iron mask taken off during this trip. Turns out he's the greatest ship captain of all time. They narrowly avoid a bunch of, I think, semi-supernatural events start happening at this point, if I'm not mistaken. No, I think you're confusing this with Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, you're, I'm you're confusing this with it. I'm together. confusing this movie with itself. I am confusing this movie with its, it, itself. <laughs> Doesn't like a weird like bone dragon come out of the ocean, kind of, somewhat? In the shape of a bone I dragon don't head. Know. No, those are like the, the big rocks or his teeth. Those are just the rocks. Well, no, there's a kraken. Liam Neeson shows up and he says, "Release the kraken," <laughs> and then the kraken comes oh, out and God. Sam Worthington has to stop right. him. Right? That's that's the movie we're talking about. We've derailed. We've derailed. All right, so they go to China, but back in Moscow, what happens? Okay, so they're on the way to China. Back in Moscow. Remember Jonathan Green, the cartographer? Yeah. There's also a dra <laughs> dragon in this movie, you know. <laughs> So there's pirates sailing to China. There's a dragon with long eyelashes. Peter the Great is on the pirate ship, dragon with long eyelashes, white wizard in London, and then there's a cartographer who's in Moscow. Okay? Yep. I can't make this any clearer. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So yep. the cartographer, he's in jail in Moscow. Who does he meet? The princess, a.k.a. the white wizard's daughter. I'm going to check quickly on her name here. It's Xing Tong Yao. I think that's pronouncing her name right. And she plays Cheng Lan. And so this is the princess, the white wizard's daughter, one of the two important good characters who are associated with dragon. Remember, there's also a witch. 
and a bunch of black wizards straight out of Chinatown. What am I, what's the word I'm looking for? What movie am I looking for here? Uh, big Trouble in China. Big, big Trouble in China. China. Yeah, there we go. Have big you ever been China. to Chinatown, Dylan? Have you ever been to China? Dave has, so. <laughs> That's why he picked this movie. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's when uh, the CCP got to him. Yeah, we, we, we don't vet, we don't vet our... Now he's a our sleeper agent. Well. Okay, they are in Russian jail in Moscow. Now, Cheng Lan, the princess, we'll just call her the princess because there's no way I'm going to remember all the names, but Cheng Lan, uh, she's in jail because, remember, they needed to imprison the white wizard and the princess in two prisons as far away from each other as possible. So Jackie Chan, Tower of London, princess in the Moscow jail, actually technically not that far apart, but... Hey, whatever. Now, the cartographer... John... Another thing I'd like to point out really quick. Is it normal for other countries to just send people to other countries' jails and have them... Yeah, accept political them favor. Yes. Like, who, okay, but, like, we never really established if the people, like, the black wizards are the ruling class of China. For all we know, they just look after, like, a village that grows the tea. That's all they need, Tom. Look, I want to get into yeah. the weeds on this. This is important. This is what the podcast is about now. It's just discussing this minor <laughs> plot point. Okay, we're going to move on. So, this is where we actually meet... Rucker Howard in his final film appearance. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you heard me right. Rucker Howard, Howard, sorry, not Howard. Rucker Howard in his final film appearance portrays the ambassador. Um, he's a piece of shit. I don't really remember much of him other than... I've seen things you people wouldn't <laughs> believe. Pirate ships sailing through rock outcroppings, <laughs> piloted by Peter the Great. Dragons. <laughs> All dragons with, with Chinese eyelashes. myth dragons, dragons with really long eyelashes. Wait, he does he uh, get uh, what's his name released from prison? Does he? I can't remember. Yes, yes, he exists for one scene and then exits but, the movie. Okay, so he's not a piece of shit. He is. No, he's a piece of shit. Charles Dance goes out of his way to tell you he's a piece of shit. He's like he drinks too much and he's a piece of shit. I believe <laughs> yeah. those are his exact words delivered in exact this piece movie. But no, but. the ambassador frees them. He shows up then... to free him. Doesn't he put a hit on him? He's just like, yeah, once they're out of here, just go kill both of them. Right, yes. that He was a piece of shit. No, that was the guy who knew that... Oh. They never give him a name or a title, I don't think, but he's the guy who presumably put uh, the fake mm. czar in, and he's the one who throws uh, our hero, the main character of this movie, can't state that enough, <laughs> Jonathan Green, into yep. jail. Tom's finally getting some truth in here. <laughs> okay. I have been telling nothing but the truth the right. entire so time. So Jonathan Green... So after, after he gets yeah. put in jail yeah. and released, he decides to take the princess with him for what reason? But she's getting whipped and he felt bad for her. And he thought he was a boy. Right. No, she helped him in the prison. She put the blanket on him. So they developed a bond and he says, right. I'm going to take this person with me, thinking that it is a male. Yes, by this point, they think the, the, the princess is a man because she's taped her titties down. But... <laughs> He was unconscious when she put the, like, sheer fabric on him, right? So... Yeah, but somebody told him. He just fell uh, back because she was getting whipped. Right. And he's like, I, I right. don't like seeing people get whipped. I'll take that boy girl. Trans rights. Okay. So, <laughs> they're on the road. They get ambushed. Princess turns out, like all Asians, knows kung fu. So, she busts out the kung fu and doesn't actually win the fight, does she? She, like, half wins. She kicks a few people, no. but then they're captured again, aren't they? No, no, no. I don't think they're captured. I think she starts winning, but then the demon flying monster. Oh, God. Right. Yeah. There's a demon monster in this movie. Remember, dragon, pirate, And he's demon very monster. key for the story, by the way. He comes in critical at the very end. <laughs> it's yeah. true. Oh, yeah. Dragon seal, demon monster. Remember those two things because they are key. Okay, so we need to describe this creature. Oh. We need to describe this creature because demon monster is not a very accurate description. Okay. I think, I think we need Matt to describe it because he's seen both versions of it. So that's the thing. So in the second version, it's basically a little guinea pig sized little teddy bear with bat wings. And it's in this movie, it's supposed to be kind of cute. It's like covered in like blue and pink fur. It, it has it has Disney yeah. avatar eyes. Like they're trying so hard to get you feel to feel things when this thing. Yeah. Is just on imagine screen, a right? Furby that can fly. That's, that's a good way it. to say it. It just yes, follows okay. them around. That's what it looks like. So the weird thing is that in the first movie is like a horror movie, and these little creatures are everywhere. Except they're not little furry Furby things. They still are the same size with the bat wings and stuff. And the origin of them is that they're little like half. They're like little fetuses aborted fetuses that like grow into these creatures and start terrifying people and it's also implied by the movie that ukrainians eat these things on a regular basis <laughs> 
Oh man. Yeah, that's very and then, subtle. And that's uh, and then so, but at the oh. very end, the little tag at the very end of the first movie is that one of these creatures kind of stows itself away in Jonathan Green's carriage. But at this point, it still looks like a hairless fetus horror monster with bat wings. But then it pops out in this movie and it's a little cuddly Furby thing. What the fuck is happening here? The magic of <laughs> movies. Yeah, I mean, there's no way there's any, there's any problems with continuity between these masterpieces. So Matt, you must be mistaken. That's the only explanation sure. that I can I, possibly be, yeah. fathom. Um, so we're going to move on. Little Monster saves Jonathan Green and the princess from these bandits, these Russian bandits who are sent to kill them. They're well on their way to China. We need to get to China. We are still not in like the main place where most of the plot happens. We need to get to China. So what happens on the road to China? Anything? I can't remember. I don't think so. I don't think. Nothing. He's just going to China for like half of the movie. The little demon has a bond with the princess. That's all we need to know about that. And Jonathan Green continues his job of mapping all the way to China. By the way, the way he maps is he's got some kind of a wheel on the back of his carriage that I'm guessing measures distance. I don't know. It's some revolutionary idea. It's going to change maps forever. That's the reason Peter the Great hired him. It doesn't matter. It so doesn't matter. But anyway, they bring it up like eight times. So, you know, for all those cartographers listening. They're going to hate us after this. You probably know what this is called. But, you know. China. China now. We're in China. Okay, We've we get it. to China and we meet the best character in the fucking movie, the treasurer played by Yu Li. He <laughs> is hilarious. Yep. So here's this tiny, he's like, I don't know, five foot two maybe. I'm guessing. He's kind of like stomping around this village that used to be the home of the white wizards and like probably close to where the dragon lives. And he's just exacting exorbitant taxes from everybody, but he's just this corrupt. He used to serve the white wizards, but he's just this corrupt little fuck. And the black wizards are there. And like I mentioned earlier, the black wizards are like seven foot, eight foot tall, demon looking, monstrous humanoids. Like, you know, they're human, but they're, they don't look that human. And the, the costuming looks really, really, really similar to whoever did Big Trouble in Little China. I think we all can agree, like. It looked yeah, pretty super cool. This is yeah. This is where the movie took a turn. The for way us. they were framing it. Yeah. Oh well, it turned back afterwards. <laughs> but yeah, as soon as we get to China and the film starts properly, and there's characters that are being introduced and you're understanding what they stand for and where they're going, um, the tax collector is absolutely the greatest character. Not because you know he's a well-written character, but certainly the actor and whoever did the dub for the voice knew exactly what <laughs> movie they were doing. He's chewing the scenery. It's great. He's yeah. just going nuts. <laughs> if you do happen to rent this movie and not buy, because I know no one will ever buy this. Film. Film. But if you rent it, just skip the halfway and watch this guy. because And if you nice find yourself movie. watching another movie with a completely different title, but suddenly the plot starts to click in your mind, it's probably the same movie. They just have 19 different <laughs> titles for it. So. <laughs> So he's out there collecting taxes, uh, being evil and loving it. He loves his job and he loves how evil he lets. And uh, there's some sort of rebellion. They, they start fighting the tax collectors and the soldiers. Uh, and then the three superpowered dudes start using their superpowers. The black wizards. These are the black yeah. wizards. Do we remember what their powers yeah. are? Yeah. So, so the guy with the sweet Raiden hat, he has electricity that shoots out of his hands. What a coincidence. Um, we have the horn blaster is what I like to call him. He plays bagpipes really loud. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, shit. There's the third, mm -hmm. and I don't remember. Oh, no. The third guy just beats the shit out of people. The Hulk. There's smoke. Oh, the, there's four, actually. Oh, yeah. He's the thing. Sorry. The thing. There's the super strong guy. It's the thing. He's just real strong. It's the thing. What? Oh, like from... <laughs> Fantastic Four. Yeah, it's from Fantastic yeah. Four. Sorry. Yeah, there you go. He's Chinese Ben Grimm. He's the thing. From the Fantastic Four. All right, this is now a Fantastic Four podcast. So there's uh, Sue Storm, there's Reed Riches, there's Johnny Blaze, and there's Ben Grimm. And so they went into space, and Doctor Doom was like, I'm coming too. But he's like, no, you can't be here. And the mission goes bad, and they all get superpowers. And then they have to fight each other indefinitely, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Anyways, thanks for coming to this episode of Grindhouse Courthouse. All Goodbye, right. everybody. So we got super strong guy, electric guy. Horn Blaster, and the guy who disappears into smoke. smoke and then just kind of beats people up. Anyway, those are the four black wizards. They'll come back in a little bit. Anyway, they start beating up and killing all the people. And then the princess shows up with Jonathan Green kind of in tow, but it's really just the princess. 
She runs into one of her former allies. I don't know what the hell she is to the princess. Does anyone remember the relationship? Leader of the rebellion. Okay, but what's key here? What's key here is the passage of time. So it 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 has to have been pretty fucking recent because this woman just recognizes the princess. And she's a human. Yeah. Princess might be immortal or whatever, but the other person is a human being. So obviously not that much time has passed since they've been put in prison. They they drag Jonathan Green to the sorceress. Witch. The witch, whatever. Yep. She's played by Lee Ma, Chinese actress. She's not great, um, but whatever. She does her role according to nine directors and consortiums told her to <laughs> act like. And she's just evil. She's a bad guy. Does bad stuff. Yeah. The witch is disguising yeah. herself as the princess. Oh, we'll get to the disguises. Oh, yeah. That'll, that'll come up. Well, let's just say it right now. She, she, yeah, they literally just rip off Game of Thrones at this point, And they do, like, they put on the face of the people that they're stealing. So there's literal face of the princess that's, like, soaking in some kind of weird bath. And the, the witch puts it on her face. And she starts impersonating the empress to make Jonathan Green do what she wants. And also the people do what she wants. So I guess she's been impersonating the princess for a long time at this point. Or a day or whatever. What does she want from Jonathan Green? I think she knows that he may or may not have the the medal or the icon, the key or whatever it is, the seal. The seal. Does does she think Jonathan Green has access to the seal in some way because he has access to the princess? No. I think she just knows that she he is with the princess. I think she's trying to use him as bait to get the princess. Okay. Is that what it is? I, no, 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 no. It's the other way. Okay, but then why was she like, go make maps for me? Yeah, it's the other way. The princess says, Jonathan, we're going to send you in so you can map the castle so we have a better idea of the layout so you can gain trust with the witch and then they're able to attack the castle. That's. I think that's it, yeah, because the, the, they basically send him in as like, uh, to do like some reconnaissance or whatever and map out the area. And... Okay, okay. Yeah, because then Jonathan Green, he's, he's looking to see how the elementals or the, the, the black wizards work. And then we see that there's like this poor man in a guinea pig wheel that's powering the battery cells for Raiden, Raiden <laughs> Monster, and they're making smoke bombs and mm -hmm. such. Uh, so yeah, it's like a, a recon mission with our lead hero, Jonathan Green. Something a hero would do. Who, by the way, occupies approximately 15% of screen time at this point, and it's only going to get lower. <laughs> um, and right when you think there can't be more fucking characters in this movie, there's these three fucking brothers who show up. And one of the brothers, I don't even remember where we met the brothers. In the the jail. brothers, these three Chinese brothers who were in the jail together. With, with Tower, the Tower of London. Tower of London. They were they battled Arnold. And you're, Arnold's like, <laughs> yeah, they they beat the the two the one guy gets out. He's like, I can't, I can't live without my brothers. And then Arnold's like, I respect that, and lets them all go. Yeah, right. That's why he's stern but fair. Okay, so these brothers, these three Chinese brothers, were in the goddamn jail of Tower of London. Um, were they part of the White Wizard group that got sent there, or are they just yeah. also yes. Chinese guys who got locked up in they, London? They were looking no. for the master. They were looking for the master and the princess, and they okay. realized that the master's okay. not in there. But if they waited ten seconds, Jackie Chan would have appeared, and the problem would have been solved. Okay. That's life. Dismiss it. And for some reason, they checked London instead of Moscow. I would also like to point out that this is where the movie starts introducing the whole, like, magic oh, for yeah. science oh, thing. Oh, yeah. That doesn't really go anywhere. Because uh, it turns out that the Black Wizards don't actually have dragon magic. They just have, like, sufficiently advanced science that appears like magic. Is that idea expanded on or developed yes, even a yes. little bit? Because we find out that the way that the witch is keeping all the people in the town under control is by feeding them to the dragon or like putting up anybody that rebels they put them up on the post and they say that you're going to die because the witch controls the dragon and will feed you to them so they're using an electronic dragon so they're using the electrical properties that they've developed for the the raiding character and they're zapping any type of rebellious characters so it can it continues like okay okay so they they use science to kill people uh, what does that have to do with magic? Magic is better. Oh, okay, thank you. Good. Uh, we can move on now. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, of these three brothers, they get to China too. They show up and one of the brothers is like, princess, I'll serve you. Now, this is not the princess. This is the witch with the princess's face on. So one brother goes to serve. The other two just kind of leave, I guess. I don't know. They peace out. 
don't worry about it. Basically, the only purpose of their plot is to like later be told like your brother's serving the witch and they're like, oh, no. And then you think there's going to be some big confrontation between them later. Like, oh, one brother fights the other two. No, they're like, you're serving the witch. He's like, oh, really? Shoot. I'm going to stop doing that then. No, she stabs him, doesn't she? <laughs> and then he gets, yeah, she stabs him in the face. Uh, he, he's still like, he's like <laughs> you like... guys are wrong. And then the evil princess is just like, stab. Well, yeah, I know. But but why have the brothers divided? The implication would be that they would fight each other, not just one would get murdered immediately. Oh, yeah. They were going to start fighting. Oh, yeah. and the princess just stabs him and like exposes <laughs> herself for no reason. Yeah, yeah. whatever. The, anyway, the witch, the witch okay. does some weird things, like when she finds out people are like catching on to her. <laughs> so it's just stabbing the brother, yeah. and then later on she starts killing her servants. But we'll we'll get to that because oh. that's gonna take us another thirty minutes. Yeah, well, I want to talk <laughs> about that scene. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm losing the thread here. What happens next? Okay, we we are in the the initial meeting between Jonathan Green and the the Empress. He gets hired to map yep. the the castle. What the hell happens next? You got to start bringing in the Russian pirates into China, learning how to fight and them coming together with a rebellious force in order to overtake the witch. Okay, there you go. That's it. I just summed it up. You don't have well, to- Well, I think, I think you just did it. You don't need to do anything more than that. Oh yeah, we got a training montage. Yeah. You don't have to explain anything. That was it. <laughs> There's a training montage. So we got Jonathan Green. Yes, we got Jonathan Green. We got Tsar Peter the Great. We got um, the princess. You'd think the White Wizard would need to come here. Nope. Jack Chan's still in Tower of London. Stays there the whole movie. <laughs> then we got... Who else do we got? We got the leader of the local resistance. This woman whose name... I don't see it anywhere. But You have Miss one. Dudley as well. She's, right. We got Miss Dudley. also there. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got a bunch of Cossacks. We got, you know... <laughs> Jeez, we got Charles Dance back in England. He shows up sometimes too. Anyway, <laughs> we got people in places. It's either London or China at this point, and China is where shit's going down. What the hell happens next? Yeah. So well, they they fight. Wait, they well, they yeah, just fight each other. Before they do that, though, they have to take Jonathan Green's amazing designs for flying contraptions, which is three umbrellas glued together, oh in order oh, to yes. fly into the castle and overtake this uh, particular area where the witch is. Yeah, they fight. How else are you <laughs> supposed to do that? You build flying machines. You have a, a montage where you do some like Cossack dancing and then you do some traditional Chinese dancing. And then everyone looks at each other like, oh, we're all hip hop dancing, but it's like old times or whatever. <laughs> and then they all die in a violent battle. So they, they take the flying yeah. machines, right? And they, yeah. they get in there. How long are they fighting? Is it like, it yeah, felt like two hours. two hours at that point, but it was probably only like, it was like 30 minutes. Yeah, because you have both groups coming in, battling against not just the witch's army, but also the black wizards. And this is where we start revealing that the wizards, it's all science. It's all based on science. And you have the character from the Pirates of the Caribbean that comes in and starts destroying their plan, basically. He puts on one of the helmet, realizes that it's soundproof, so the horn blower can't affect him. So he goes under and he hits him in the testicles knocking out that guy this is this is the level of movie that we're dealing with right we have a, <laughs> yeah, uh, one movie. of these giant really impressive wizards guys is defeated by having a little person headbutt him in the nuts yeah great okay just what <laughs> well all the ways that they defeat the superpowers are stupid because one guy emits smoke and like can move around really quickly i trained at juilliard <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for professional actors in this movie. I really do. But they, they defeat one of these guys by like wrapping him up in a blanket. And like he's powerless. He literally cannot stop. The giant rock guy who's supposedly impervious to all damage is defeated when he like trips and all his armor just shatters and he's completely yeah. naked underneath. And then the Weird, Raiden yeah. one yeah. dies because his batteries run out and that's it. Oh, they, yeah, they just hack him to pieces and they show him oh, like, yeah. cutting out his insides. Dude eats his liver. Oh. <laughs> I, do, I do have one note, though, because in this fight scene, it's just like, this is, this is a family friend movie where it's just like people are just like hitting each other with bamboo sticks. But one guy flies in oh, and gets yeah. like stabbed in the face like 12 times and it just <laughs> threw us off completely. Like simultaneously, like 12 yes. people just like stick their swords in this one dude. <laughs> <laughs> there's other targets but they all choose like fuck that one guy and they show it all too. It's so weird it's weird 
It's a weird blend of like family friendly and also like here's some graphic right. violence. Meanwhile, this this the the drama and the tension of the scene is heightened because either Jonathan Green or Miss Dudley or both of them are tied to the pole about to get electrocuted by the giant fake dragon. Does anyone remember which one is it? Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah, you nailed it. That's Okay. That's it. That's it. And then and this is also so I guess they basically I think when they win, they're still tied to this thing and they let them go. One of them's wearing, I think Jonathan Green's still wearing his, his, um, his blindfold. And then she says, like, hey, it's me. And he's like, who? And then he sees her and he's like, oh, it's that woman I impregnated years ago. <laughs> and just split town and had a child with. Just to escape that's, my fatherly duty. Yeah. Hey, yeah, he sent her so a letter. He because... sent her a letter. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot how much time passed for him sleeping with her, them having a child, which the kid is probably like seven. Oh, yeah. And then them ending up in China. That's the last person you would expect <laughs> to see once your blindfold was removed. <laughs> She's just there for the child support. Can you imagine, like, fucking up your life? You owe me $50,000. <laughs> Listen, the map, the map business is booming. <laughs> She's desperate to have him be a father, and he's desperate to not be a father. And they only realize that really right at the end of the movie when neither of them are really happy. <laughs> Jonathan, you piece of shit. You got to make some money for this kid of ours. Listen, babe, I got this great deal lined up with Peter the Great. It's 100% foolproof. We're going to be rich. That's what you said about the last one, and you wound up in Dracula's cave. <laughs> Baby, this one's 100% foolproof. Don't you worry. I'm going to India next. Jonathan, you piece of shit. There is secretly an excellent movie hiding. We're both there. tied up to this stake and this dragon's going to fucking electrocute us and you still haven't made any money. <laughs> That's the movie that I want to watch. Is one person who realizes what's going on and like can't get anybody else to just acknowledge that the kid needs money for schooling. <laughs> yeah, Charles Dance is like the rational, like, you need to break up with this man. No, I love him, Dad. <laughs> All right, so anyway, the dragon's about to electrocute them. The pirates are desperately trying to blow up the dragon. They do. <laughs> I think they do. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. Like, just... Just skip this. The, they win the battle. The witch it. goes crazy. She goes up to her tower. And then we get the, the princess. The princess cuts the eyelashes. Remember, there's a yeah. fucking dragon in this movie. Okay. Right. <laughs> the dragon's eyelashes are cut. She unleashes the dragon. The dragon is released. And it is just a full-blown Chinese myth dragon. He wakes up. You think this would kind of be the end, but yeah. it's not somehow. So she's flying around on the dragon. The witch is flying around on something. I don't even know what she's flying around on. Some oh, a zeppelin. Of... She's flying around on her zeppelin. She has a zeppelin full oh, yeah. of gold <laughs> as her escape plan. Right. Oh, yeah, the yeah. fucking treasure oh, is with her trying to get away with all the gold. <laughs> and somehow this dragon doesn't just immediately like eviscerate her, uh, but she falls down onto this, like, I don't know, temple looking thing. And her and the emperor or the princess start to just fist fight basically i don't remember exactly what they did but yeah that, that's basically it but it gets confusing because the witch is still wearing the princess's face right and the princess and the witch they're also dressed in the same costume mm -hmm. yep. so we have no idea who is who except for occasionally when the witch her eyes turn black so they're fighting. It gets even more complicated because the witch has like two assistants of hers <laughs> that are also identical to this person. So there are four of them all wearing the same clothing. Yeah, the witch's two sidekicks put on the two other masks of the princess and they join in on the fight. So there are three bad princesses and one good one. Okay, but there's something really important here about this fight scene. It's only ever a one versus one. At no point do the other two come out and be like, you know, if we all just rush her, we could just like stab her and the fight would be over. No, 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 they do. They do because the... Why don't they lead with that? <laughs> I got nothing. Don't shrug at me. Don't you shrug at me. But no, no, no. The, so what the princess does is she finds out that <laughs> the, the witch is using secret doors or tunnels and then the other uh, the servants are coming out to battle her. So what she does is she flips the cauldrons which have ember to fall into these tunnels and it brings all of them out and they have this three versus one battle, but it's just a spin battle where they just grab their dress and they spin around in circles and jump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how you fight, but, right? We've all seen Star Wars. We know how it works. then is able to get the dragon seal because she wants to control the dragon. 
when she finally gets it, she decides that she doesn't need her servants anymore and kicks them off the temple one by one. <laughs> and then we have the Russian czar pirates with the Chinese army come up to this temple and point a gun at the witch or princess deciding who should they shoot. Oh, right. I <laughs> forgot about that. And this is where the key <laughs> moment comes in where that little Furby is the deciding factor. So the whole oh, first movie. Yeah. Remember, there's a flying Furby. The whole Remember. first movie is lean up to this point. We need that first movie for this yep. point alone. <laughs> so does anyone remember what the hell happens? So what happens, Dave? Obviously your favorite yeah. part. Why don't you the f- little Furby flies to the princess. And then John the Green's like, that's the princess. And then, yeah, they figure it out. That's it. And what do they do? I can't actually remember. Do they kick her off the temple? <laughs> do they kill the witch? or? <laughs> Is it just over? Doesn't the dragon eat her? Or doesn't she jump off onto the dragon? No. What happens, okay, so what happens is Dave is right. The Furby decides to fly over the princess, and there's like, this clearly is the princess. Let's shoot the witch. And the witch is like, I'm out of here. She jumps off the temple, assuming that the off. dragon is going to catch her because she has the dragon seal, but it doesn't. And she just falls to her death in the ocean. That's it. Yeah. That's the collusion of this movie. Oh, yeah, that's how forgot. they defeat the villain. The villain had a very, very skewed misconception of what the seal was and could do. She's like, yeah, I got it. it. means I can control the dragon, right? It's like, that's <laughs> not at all what that thing is. Did you do any research? It means he's going to catch me, right? Anyway, oh, it's very yeah. funny. She plummets to her death. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, end scene, the movie is over, nothing else happens, right? No, you're wrong, because they stand around on top and, like, right. talk a bit and whatever, and it's like, oh, uh, let's go on to our next adventure. They think there's some sequel things, it doesn't matter. What is important is that they choose this point to bring back Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. and Jackie Chan. Yeah. Thank God, yeah. So, uh, right at the end of the movie, uh, I don't even know how Jackie Chan... They're still in London, right? They're still in London, they never left. Jackie Chan, like, they keep cutting back to him during the fight scenes, to show that like he may or may not be the physical representation yeah. of the dragon, even though you can see it and it's like flying around. But Jackie Chan's doing moves and the dragon's doing moves. It's very confusing. What is important is he decides. Well, the last line really clarifies things. So let's with, let's get to it. <sighs> so Jackie Chan and Arnold Schwarzenegger end up in China, and. Uh, Jackie Chan says, the dragon is everywhere. And Arnold looks out at the world and says, yeah, I guess so. And then the movie ends. Is the dragon everywhere or is the dragon in all of us? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Because really? he's just standing there. Was the dragon the friends we made along the way? <laughs> yes. Yep. That's what they're implying at the end. It's like, oh, the dragon is, is among all of us. And it was a it was a metaphor for clean living and drinking tea or something. Anyway, Jackie Chan never left that prison. It was the whole movie happened in his head. It's the ravings of a lunatic locked in the Tower of London in the 1870s. That's the takeaway. There is no Jonathan Green. It's, it's... Of course he wasn't locked up with Tsar Peter the Great. None of this happened. There's no dragon. And when he died, the movie died. Like that was actually the end. It was the fever dream of the horny guy in the cell. That's, that's what it was. Oh, great. Just cuts to black. Yeah. Yeah. Because after he dies, everything that happens is unrealistic, right? <laughs> everything before he dies is real. It's the final it's the final synapse firings of a man whose blood has completely drained from his brain straight into his dick. And it's just these <laughs> these flashes and images. <laughs> <laughs> of, of his of his fantasies as he slowly dies from complete drainage. <laughs> if they pulled a Jacob's Ladder in this movie and had that at the end where it's just him in the cell like, oh, that would have been cool and then it smashes to the credits. Best movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Fucking just like Chris Angel mind freak levels of entertainment there. Oh, so powerful. Oh, man. Do you know growing up because of the way that Chris Angel spelt his name, I always thought his actual performance name was Crisis Angel, and I thought that was a cool name. I'm like, yeah, Crisis Angel. That's a wicked name. Crisis Angel. Is that tidbit? Anyway. That's better than Chris Angel. He, he can keep the eyeliner and the, uh, like, you know, casting spells with his hands thing, but uh, this is now a Chris Angel <laughs> podcast. So the last episode of Mind Freak that I watched, he decided... To take a dollar bill. And he took the bill, right? And Do we want to talk about... Okay. 
So do we want to talk about some of the good aspects of this movie? Because we've gone sure. through pretty much the story, what we hated about it. But there are, I don't want to say redeeming qualities, but there are things in this movie that make it competent. Like the sets that they use for this, the there costumes, is... like the choreographed yeah. fights. Like a lot of effort went into this. So everything that the money could buy, except for the talent, right? It's like <laughs> everything the money can buy was good. <laughs> and then the talent they used is garbage. I was going to say like the only cool part, I guess the coolest part is those Eternals, like the wizard dudes, right? Yeah. The yeah. guys who were ripped the off, black who were wizards. kind of like playing on uh, the black wizards from Big Trouble in Little China. Basically, the thought that came into my mind as I watched the first, for, like the prequel to this, that garbage movie and this movie, is that these are just like Guillermo del Toro movies where there's cool concept art to it, but the movie itself is pretty crappy. Mm. And like, mm-hmm. I didn't, it, like in this movie, there is not one person that fucks a fish man. So that's probably why this didn't get the Oscar nominations. That well, we should talk about yeah, the award. Leave that won an Oscar. <laughs> no, no, hold on, hold on, though. We did get an amazing scene with a fish, though. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> this one moment where 3D is introduced, a fish flies at you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just out of nowhere. Don't you remember? Some guy sits on a fish and well, it was shoots that? out right into They're the in camera. A... They're in a market or something, and then this there's stuff flying all over the place, and then a fish comes right at the camera, and then it pauses in slow mo, and its mouth kind of like goes up and down, like burp 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 burp. I don't remember <laughs> that. Oh my god! I think I need to watch the whole movie again. Sexy just for fish that scene. mouth. Yeah. I think you have to. <laughs> yeah, you totally oh, should. This is hilarious, by the way, looking through our pros because one of our pros is Polly Shore of Chinese actors playing the Emperor Dash Bobby Lee. <laughs> what the hell? I think that's the. Treasurer. I think that's supposed He's to refer to the Bobby treasurer. Lee. Yeah, the treasurer character. And we were arguing whether he was the Chinese. Polly Shore or just Bobby Lee. <laughs> and it's not because he's Asian. It's because of the way he acted. <laughs> and then yeah. the other note is J- Jackie Chan is a plant and gets his energy from the sun. <laughs> this is a scene we forgot to mention. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jack, uh, there's a brief really moment in the beginning. where they're like, you're not, you don't know that this isn't a movie yet. And they're, yeah, they're, they're like introducing things about his character where it's like, oh, I'm so hungry. And Jackie Chan's a cool guy. So he's like, I will just sit by the window and look into the sun. And it's like, motherfucker, <laughs> humans need to eat. But he's the master. Yeah. And we're finding out that he might, there Drink might be water. more to him. Or he can control a mythical dragon, maybe. Or is yeah. he the dragon? We, we, we won't get that answer. Because when he flexed out of his chains... I, I'm going to sit here we'll and wait until we get the I think answer. we have to watch. Yeah, we might have to watch the third movie when that comes out. So you're going to be waiting for a while. I think I was, I was, I was disappointed with the fact that the, like, the elemental dudes were just science space. I was, I was hoping they would have gone like full myth on that one. And there's actually super, like superpowers. That was a disappointment for me. Well, there, there is and there isn't, right? Because some people can just subsist themselves entirely by staring well, at I mean. the sun for 20 minutes like, a there's day. There's like science stuff and myth stuff. And the one cool myth thing, like, like the electrical and like the gas guy, it just turned out to be science. I thought that was a missed, missed opportunity. Well, there's a Chinese myth dragon. It's a missed opportunity. Yeah, like let's just keep running with that. And it's just a well, dragon. There's a Chinese myth dragon. Yep. Or maybe there isn't. And it was just a story that someone told to Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> it was just Jackie Chan shitting and pissing himself in the Tower of London for like four hours. <laughs> or no, it was the Count of Monte Cristo as the blood flowed out of his brain and his neurapses were just firing and he's been making up all the shit in his head. Should we talk about our predictions now that we've very clearly explained this psychotic movie? Okay, so Tom, his prediction was that Jackie Chan and Arnold Schwarzenegger will not be in this movie for more than one scene, 37 seconds. That was wrong. They were in quite a few scenes, bit bit heavy false. on the end, yeah. but most importantly, at, or at the beginning, excuse me, but most importantly, at the end, we learn that dragons are in all of us. We are all dragons. The dragon is the world, and Arnold Schwarzenegger let Jackie Chan go back to China. Okay, next prediction, my prediction. Dragons are imaginary. And they are real. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How can I? How can we see ourselves if our eyes aren't real? Okay. <laughs> My prediction. Iron Mask. I thought the Iron Mask would turn out to be Jackie Chan's son, but somehow he didn't recognize having spent years in prison with him. <laughs> I guess that wasn't the best decision, but I made that prediction. Um, my, my next prediction was just a question. How are the English involved? <laughs> no clue. <laughs> 
Final prediction. Chinese myth dragon saves the day. That was 100% right. All right. Dave's prediction. Dave says deep fakes. Yeah, so Iron Mask is a Chinese <laughs> artifact. <laughs> so hold on, hold on. So when Adam first suggested this movie, I didn't believe this was no. real at all. And I thought the whole movie was someone doing deep fakes to get those oh, actors yeah. in this movie. I did not believe this was real. So it blew my mind when it actually was real. But my prediction was so that Dave thought this <laughs> all that is required for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. And, you know, I should have jumped on that right then saying they're not going to they're not going to So do Dave it, thought this whole movie <laughs> my just this just movie. It's my bunch fault. of fucking Russian and Chinese actors who deep faked famous Hollywood <laughs> stars into it. I was it. blown away. But yeah, my uh, prediction was that the Iron Mask was going to be the artifact and Jackie Chan needed to get it. Yeah. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger right. had to hunt him down, but none of that happened. So you mean you mean when they named that when they titled the movie the yeah. Iron Mask, you thought I, the Iron Mask would be a relevant part I of the movie? Be some Again, of this is not this is not Czar Peter's sequel. This sequel is for Jonathan Green, who is like the <laughs> least important character. Oh, I, I did I didn't know that at the time though. I, yeah, I know none of us did, or after the movie really, until we like started researching it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Matt, do you see your predictions, or should I read? Yeah, them? I essentially, I essentially thought it would be just like Tom's. Like they would only be in this movie. Like Jackie Chan and Arnold would only be in this for a few seconds. I thought they would do a trick where Jackie Chan's character is in the Iron Mask, so you ha- get to have a different actor, and Jackie Chan can just dub over himself, and he only shows up at the very end. Which is practically not that different from what he actually did. He only did two days of shooting anyway, so I don't know. Yeah. It's just bad. Adam, do you see yours? So I wanted a buddy cop film where you had Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Jackie Chan teaming up. And the end would have Jackie Chan riding a dragon while Arnold Arnold Schwarzenegger was just throwing out some one-liners. I was completely wrong. Yeah, you had it backwards because uh, Arnold was riding the dragon inside (laughs) him and also around the world. And Jackie Chan was throwing out the one-liners being like, look at the water. Do you see the dragon, you dumb shit? Look at the sky. And, and, Tom, the and Tom was dragon riding watched. the dragon because he's addicted to opium and was smoking opium during the entire screening of this movie. <laughs> so we watched the first 15 minutes, I think, of this movie. And then we all kind of got like a little bit of an idea. And we did new predictions. And reading through them, right. they were all completely wrong as yeah. well. So... <laughs> so we'd already watched part of this movie, made new predictions, and then we were wrong. So mine was, oh, this is just a ripoff of Dracula, but in Russia. And then I said Moscow Zero, which is the shitty fucking Russian horror movie with Val Kilmer. I don't even remember the point I was trying to make. It was just probably because I saw the Moscow scene. I'm like, yeah, it's Mo- Moscow Zero. And I thought, anyway, Dave, you had a prediction too. I thought it was a Van Helsing from like different regions or something. Like he was going to you know, hunt down demons, but. That didn't happen. And we should feel a little vindicated that we were we were sensing just the prequel is what we were sensing. Yeah, we were just basically. like through the the yeah. vibrations of the film, like we were yeah. picking up like, oh, this must have happened to Jonathan Green in the previous actually, movie. Actually, I think Tom is the closest <laughs> to prediction. I think he was almost spot on. Yeah. So Tom guessed What did I what did I say? Just like Night Watch, set up a beautiful world but don't explain anything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not backing off that one. I stand by that prediction 100%. Walker got a little meta. I got. I, I thought this was a complete propaganda. The Russians and Chinese are coming together, so it was just like basically all this communist propaganda shoehorned into this magical fantasy world. And I thought Putin might make a cameo. Oh, but that would have been great. I was... <laughs> I was really riding a dragon. I thought he would, he would be perfect riding the dragon for sure. Yeah. I noticed they didn't make any digs at Ukrainians in this one though, saying they eat aborted fetuses. So that's a, that's an improvement. Yeah. That was for the first one. So I guess that would have been closer to when Russia took over the Crimea region. So it would or have been invaded more Ukraine for the first one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Invade. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> to yeah. phrase it a certain way. I don't way, know. It's all spin. You know? So what, do, what does everyone give this movie it's out not, of though. 10? Jesus. Um, Five is a very average film. Remember. Uh, yeah. Okay. How about we make it simpler? How about we make it simple? Let's make it simpler. Would you tell, let's, let's say someone who wants to like watch it tongue in cheek, would they get a kick out of this movie? No. Yeah. Would not recommend no. it for that purpose. It's not that. It doesn't lean into it enough. 
basically only only that uh yeah. right but I, i'm saying I, the great Lee ones but the was... yeah but the great ones don't the great ones don't aren't aware of like there's nothing less funny than a movie that aware is aware that it's bad and therefore it's trying to play that up so like i guess watch oh, it yeah. hipster style a little bit ironically Psh. would you recommend that to rephrase my question then someone who wants to watch a bad a good bad movie if you have a any trolls yeah. still okay. no. <laughs> It's it's boring most of the time. Like when you start looking at it with a really critical eye, like Dave, you were talking about that Charles Dance scene where all of his servants are just like slowly creeping in on him behind him for no reason. And it's like, this guy's very powerful and wealthy. He can tell him to fuck off, but they and don't they, do it. Yeah, it's very weird acting. Little things. And it's like, oh, it's it's kind of like the room in that, you know, there are very strange choices made. There's just too much money in this. There's not enough crazy insanity. There's no pictures of spoons on the wall is what I'm trying I to I don't say. get that reference. That's a reference. Got it. Adam, yeah, it's, it's a would you, would you <laughs> the, the recommend this? The three people this? who have seen the room would are you cheering you for me right recommend this to someone as kind of a tongue-in-cheek, this is a good, bad movie, or no? And I'm not even, I'm, I'm not even no, going to ask so, the question if it's a good movie because I know it's not a good movie. This is the only way you'd recommend it. <laughs> No, so yeah, I would definitely not recommend this movie. And I actually tried to show the trailer to my partner. And she asked one question of, why is Jackie Chan in a prison? And I had to spend 20 minutes <laughs> of setup. <laughs> I'm saying like, all right, hold on. There's a mythical dragon with eyelashes that can make this plant that healing properties. But then you got the white wizards. You got the black wizards. And they got separated across the world. And he's in a prison. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger's there. But he's really nice. And he tells people to exercise. It was just like, no, there's so much. It's, it's, it's baffling how this movie was put together and... I don't know. Every time I tried to watch it again to like collect notes to to build up a defense because I was with Matt on this one, I kept getting a headache. Like my brain wanted to have an aneurysm every time I tried to watch this again. And I I can't do it. I can't do it again. If we have to come back and watch the third one, I'm going to cry. That's that's where I stand with this movie now. We're going to have to. They're filming it as we speak. I think the only person that has to watch it is Matt to fil- finish the trilogy. <laughs> oh, God. I probably will. I saw the first one. But but if but the first one is worse than this. That's scary. Like, at least this one is kind of... Like, you got those elemental dudes and you're kind of all over the place. The first one is drab and boring because it's in a swamp the entire movie. It's so- just boring and sad and annoying. And there are all these Ukrainian dudes that look exactly alike. And I couldn't tell any of them apart. They all just have big, long mustaches and Skrillex hair and big <laughs> parachute pants. And I couldn't tell who was who. And that was worse. So this was so that means like they're on an upward trajectory. So maybe the third one would be but halfway decent. He, he might have been learning from his past mistakes. No, I don't think so. Do you think it was worse because you didn't watch it with us and you had to watch it by yourself? And that the only Probably. enjoyment that you got out of the second one was us literally going insane together trying to put okay. this together. So in that sense, would you recommend it, this to watch as a group of friends, someone like us? Would you recommend this movie to a group like us? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Like our, our bonds have... We're, we're yeah, in we, complete we agreement. Are, together like our bonds have grown stronger from watching this movie uh there was a camaraderie that was formed but i would not recommend this to anybody else watching it just as the dragon's eyelashes grow deep into the earth so have our bonds grown stronger (laughs) that's the moral of the story we few we proud few we We band of brothers who have neither moms nor Uh, moms All right, so we... Oh, wait, before we do that, God damn it. isn't it a little hypocritical of Arnold Schwarzenegger to tell people to exercise when he's feeding them <laughs> small rations of prison gruel once oh, we yeah, them we, to death? We didn't go over that yet. Because, <laughs> like, the, a very large part of this movie is, like, Arnold is going to beat the shit out of you while you try to escape yeah. prison, right? Like, multiple plot <laughs> yeah. points hinge on that. Why is he in the movie? It breaks or makes the film, and it broke it. It broke it. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm ready to put this movie to rest. That's my final point. All right. We watched 2019 Iron Mask, also known as V2, also known as something else. Does anyone remember the other title? Journey to China? Nope. Dragon Seal? Yeah, the Iron Mask, colon, the mystery of the Dragon Seal. Okay. Oh, God. So we watched a movie with many (laughs) names. It was produced in 2019. It has Jackie Chan and Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. So if you see it, that's the movie we watched. <laughs> it was written by Oleg Stepchenko, produced by 40 different people, including 
the Communist Party of China and whatever party Vladimir Putin represents. It's the strangest thing we've ever seen, both in terms of the movie, in terms of story, in terms of how a movie is even put together. No one recommended it. It is an experience more than a movie, and it's available free online through VVS Films. We'll see you next week. This has been <laughs> Grindhouse Courthouse. And with that, the court is adjourned. Come back next time for a new trial with new litigants in the never-ending parade of schlock that is Grindhouse Courthouse. Motherfuckers.